Good evening and welcome to the evening service for Grace Bible Baptist Church. Again, our evening services and midweek services are live stream only for right now. I'm still doing some repairs and things like that and um, asking God's will in those matters as uh, we're under construction and um, seeing a lot happen and we thank God for that. And I enjoyed being with you all this morning. Hope and pray the uh, message and uh, song of pra songs of praise were a blessing to you. And uh, it's always good to be in the house of God and around the people of God. And uh, it's encouraging and challenging. And uh, uh, be there for Sunday school. There were some things uh, in the lesson this morning that really spoke to my heart. And uh, I believe it will be a blessing to others uh, if you would be there and be a part of that. That's something we should all do. Um, gladly joining and fellowshipping and worshiping God together. Uh, going over announcements again, um, again, I've already mentioned the midweek service and Sunday night services. Sunday morning is in person only until February. Be in prayer for us as we are traveling and uh, going, heading out to this conference that God's will be done in that matter. And um, also on the 29th, I believe we were announcing the 30th originally. Um, but we had to change that. The 30th is actually that Sunday. The 29th is the Saturday where Lighthouse Baptist Church and uh, their missionaries that are, that are there with them at that time will go out and uh, knock doors with us. And we're looking forward to that. And I want every member of our church to be a part of that as we go out and try to uh, win souls for Christ and see others come and uh, join in the work of the Lord there at Grace Bible Baptist Church. So we all want to be a part of that. Don't miss out on it. And it won't just be on the 29th. We will uh, be getting that done um, a, a lot of our weekends coming up uh, in preparation for that first Sunday in February and um, just to get out and invite people to church and see people join in and uh, be a part of the work that God is doing there. Uh, was contacted this evening about our tracks and flyers. All of that should be getting set into place. Um, we are uh, going to be proofreading some of that pretty soon here and hopefully getting those flyers mailed out this weekend. Um, I'm hitting homes this weekend and then we can start getting the door hangers and things like that on, on the doorsteps and uh, inviting people into the uh, work of the Lord and uh, to the fellowship of the saints. And that is uh, something that I'm excited to be a part of. I believe all of us need to be a part of that. So um, thank God for what he's doing. Thank God for what he's doing at uh, Grace Bible Baptist Church and everyone that's excited to play a part of that. We're excited to be a part of it with you. And we're looking for others uh, that may want to be a part of the work of what God is doing in Mobile. And I believe God's ready to uh, do some things and uh, we've already seen him do some things. We want to be a part of that. So we'll have uh, tonight, um, I'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, and also Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 through 3, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, and Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 3, and holy places in Hebrews as we read 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and then Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. I'll read it again. For we walk by faith, not by sight. That has been me and my wife's uh, life verse um, ever since uh, we met and began to talk and uh, through our marriage and uh, with each child and every step of the way that has been our, our verse, walking by faith and not by sight. And Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 1 through 3 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Boy, faith is a, a big part of the Christian life. Uh, you're not a, a child of God until you receive the work of God, the, uh, the sacrifice of God by faith. Um, that is the initial thing. You must receive the grace of God by faith. And there's a continuation of that as we walk by faith. And we'll look at that a little bit tonight 
as we get into the message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for time together around your word. We thank you for what you did this morning. We thank you for what you're doing in Mobile. Father, we thank you for the work that you're doing through our church. And Father, we're just glad to be a part of it. And Father, we pray that you continue to have your will in your way. Uh, let your word do as you would have it to do and perform its purpose. And Father, let it do a work in me and let it do a work in our church, each and every one of us. And Father, may we be challenged to continue to walk by faith, to live for you, to, to grow closer to you and, uh, and be excited about the work that you have us to do. And we praise you and love you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Again, walking by faith is the title of the message. And again, it's the basis of the Christian life. Every step we take, everything we do, every move we make as a child of God should be done by faith. We should live and move and act and carry ourselves by faith in Christ. I don't want to do something outside of uh, my faith in God, that already tells me right there I'm going the wrong way. I'm doing something that God probably wants, doesn't want me to have any part of because I'm not trusting him through it or trusting him to do it or uh, going with him in it. You want to make sure that God is in all that you're doing. Hebrews 10, 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith. Boy, I, I want to my life to be evidence of faith in Christ. My life should show that, boy, he trusted God. Boy, you could tell by his life that he believed God. Those who are saved by grace through faith live by faith. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now to tell you about our faith, we have not seen God but we believe that he is. We don't know that we know that he was never created, but we believe this to be so. We can't understand all of that in our minds, but we just believe it. We didn't see him create heaven and earth, but we trust that he did. We didn't see him take the sinner's place, but we believe that he did. We believe that he has taken our place. None of us have seen him preparing mansions for us in heaven. He said that he was, but we haven't seen it. We believe that he is. How is it we can trust him with these things? But when it comes to other areas and aspects of our lives, we choose not to trust him on the not so big things. Well, it, it's big to me, you know, so I, I'm going to handle this myself. Uh, you're making a mistake when you handle it yourself and you take it into your own hands and you take it up on yourself to do uh, what's in God's power to do. Too often as Christians, we suffer and we struggle because we took something into our own hands instead of giving it to God the Father. Faith is in every aspect of the Christian life. Our lives, again, are evidence of our faith in Christ. And every step of a child of God is ordained by God. The steps of a good man, Psalms 37 and verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Even when things are um, out of our control, it's out of our hands. Hey, it may be out of my hands, but I know it's in the Father's hands. Uh, it may not be something that I have any control over whatsoever, but God is still in control. All throughout the uh, pandemic, I told um, our teenagers, and I'll say it now as the pastor of Grace Bible Baptist Church, God is in control. Uh, he never left control. Uh, COVID didn't take him by surprise. He wasn't shocked by this pandemic. None of this is out of his control. Uh, we may act like it's out of control, but God is very much in control. Uh, we don't control the outcome of things. We just trust God with it. Hebrews 6 verse 3 says, and this will we do if God permit, if God allows us to. Um, I don't know that I'll make the trip wherever I'm going. If God permits me to, I will be there. I've told many people, Lord willing, if that's, if uh, Lord willing, I'll be there at such and such time. That's what I plan to do. That is what I'm hoping to accomplish. But God's will may not be that. He may have me somewhere else. So if God permits, if God allows me to, Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, boast 
not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Uh, James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And verse 13. James 4, 13 says, Go to now, you that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Boy, I, I want to do what God is telling me to do, and that's me just trusting God to do it. Trusting God to, to do what I can't accomplish on my own. You know, a lot of us, we don't like something not being in our power we don't like not being in control of a thing. We like to, to control every aspect of it. But you show your faith in God when you say, God, I submit to you. I yield to you. Whatever you would have to, to happen in this situation is what we want to be. And that is uh, just being surrendered to God. If the Lord wills, I'm walking by faith. I'm just trusting God with this thing. You still have to walk by faith. Or you're in sin against God. Don't worry yourself sick over things you have no control over. Too often we say, yeah, I'm trusting God with it. Well, I'm trusting God to take care of this thing. And we've got knots in our stomach and worry to death, but we're trusting God. No, you're, you're, you're fretting. You're, you're overly concerned with this thing and letting it bother you and affect your health. Don't worry yourself sick over something you have absolutely no control over. It's in the hands of God the Father. If the Lord so wills, this is what it will be. If he doesn't want it to be, then it will not be. Don't destroy your, your health over something God may very well be permitting to happen. Boy, I, I want God to see that I'm just trusting him. I, I have no control over uh, all that takes place. During the uh, process of trying to get this building ready and prepared for us to be able to come in and worship every service, uh, there have been many things that have been just completely out of my control. I had no control over whatsoever. And that can be bothersome to us. We want to make sure this is just right and make sure that is just right. But hey, God is taking care of it. And time after time again, God showed clearly, I've got this thing. Just trust me with it. So we want to walk by faith. And number two, we want to remain faithful. You know, don't be fearful. Be faithful. Fear happens. There are times when we're upset or concerned about something. But remember to trust God. Don't let fear conquer you and your faith in God. Psalms 56 verse 3, the psalmist said, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Well, I wish I could say I never was afraid. I wish I could say I, I never had anything that concerned me or bothered me. Boy, I just always trust God with it. Boy, I, yeah, God gets me to that point. There are times I have to be reminded, just trust me, son. I, I've got you. Just trust me on this. And that's what we've got to remember. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. It's not about what's making you afraid. It's about your faith in God. It's not about the problem. It's about how you respond to the problem. If you go with that problem with your own hands and your own power and your own might and your own strength, you have reason to be afraid. But if you go to that problem in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in his power, in his strength, and your faith in him, there's nothing to be afraid of. Your faith in God isn't clearly seen sometimes until problems come. Boy, it's easy on the mountaintop to say, hey, I serve God, I love God, I'm following him and I'm walking by faith. But when the valley happens and valleys come, when you're down in, that, in the depths of the sea and in the storms and don't understand what all is taking place and can't tell up from down and what's going on around you, like we mentioned Job this morning, lost everything, but he still trusted God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Though he slay me, that's the kind of faith 
we need to have. Yet will I trust in him. Your faith in God isn't clearly seen until problems come. Well, it's easy to say I love the Lord, but prove that love. It's easy to say I trust in the Lord, but when it's time to prove that trust, sometimes it's a little bit difficult for people. I, I, I trust you. We, it's easy to say with our, our, our lips, our mouth. It's, it's easy for us to say that. But when it comes to the act of trusting, some people walk away. Don't walk away in the middle of the battle. Don't walk away when things are getting tough. Don't fail to serve God just as God is about to show his power through you. But you failed to trust him. Because often God's power is seen in those tougher moments. I mentioned Paul this morning and that thorn in his flesh. He said that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'll glory in my infirmities. Well, I'll gladly go through this thing. I'll, I'll gladly endure this, that the power of Christ is evident in me. Faith is further seen in our action. Don't hide and say, I trust God to do it. I trust God to make sure it happens. Boy, God's going to see that thing accomplished right there. No, God's, God's looking for some volunteers. God's looking for somebody to say, God, I, I'll pick up the sling and the stone. I, I'll do my part, God. God, I, I want to be faithful. I want to protect the sheep. I, I want to do my part, but I want you to know that God's behind it. David was one that protected the sheep. He killed the lion and the bear. But this is what he had to say about it in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 37. He said, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Well, that's where his confidence was. That's where his hope was. That's where his faith was. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And David knew how God worked. David had seen God work. And David was trusting God to work again. Some of us, we don't trust God on these bigger problems because we fail to trust God in smaller areas. You say a lion and a bear is not small. But uh, compared to Goliath, they were small. Uh, but David said the same God that delivered me from them will also deliver me from him. And when you trust God and God brings you through some trials and some, some things and you're victorious in those things, you can say, boy, the, I, I remember the time God delivered me from this and God protected me here and God watched over me there and God is continuing to provide in my life and I just trust that God is going to do it again. Well, you've seen God work. You know how God works and you're trusting God to continue to work. Don't quit because there's a Goliath in your life. Don't quit because you're afraid. Continue to hope and trust in God and stay faithful. You know, under the threat of being cast into the fire, the three Hebrew children didn't say, uh, you know what? We quit. <laughs> we're going to go and bow to this image and uh, we'll just we'll just know that we're alive with everybody else. No, they didn't give in. They stood faithful for God. And people saw the power of God through them. Daniel trusted God and continued praying, even though he knew it would cost him his life. It would cost him his life. If he continued to pray to God, they took Daniel and they cast him in the lion's den and God stopped the mouths of the lions. Boy, when you see God work in areas like that, that does something. That, that's God moving and that does something for you. Boy, God shows his power. God gets the glory and the honor and you know and you build and you gain confidence in who God is. Boy, I... I remember that time God did this and God moved this mountain and God took care of this storm and God calmed those seas and God fed the 5,000. I remember these moments and hey, those moments will come if you remain faithful. We need to remain faithful. The apostles trusted God through persecutions, through imprisonments. They stayed faithful to the work. There are lost souls depending on your faithfulness. They're depending on your faithful stand. They're depending on your faithfulness to speak up and tell them about Jesus, your faithfulness to live for God. They're, they're looking at you. They need to see somebody that's real. 
And we don't need to, every time the storms arise, oh, well, let's go hide somewhere. Let's, let's forget that we've been bragging on God all this time. And now all of a sudden, when it's time to really brag on God and watch God work, we've disappeared somewhere because we're more afraid of the storm than instead of confident in God. I want to be more confident in him. Many today can just stub a toe when they're out of the ministry. They're ready to quit. They're done. No longer an effective witness. Can't do anything useful for God because something didn't go my way. Uh, this didn't happen the way I wanted it to, to happen. Maybe that's not the way God wanted it to happen. Uh, Paul thought they were going to Asia and the spirit forbade them. Boy, they thought they were going to do a great thing, a great work over in Asia. We're ready to go. And God said, no, mm -mm. not there. Not right now. Well, I'm out of the ministry. I quit because that didn't go the way I wanted it to. No, they continued. They stayed faithful. Imagine if Christ had quit. Imagine if he had said, I'm done. You know, they pulled out my beard. I quit. They pl planted a crown of thorns in my head. I quit. Boy, they beat me with a cat of nine tails. I quit. Boy, they're hammering these nails into my hands, into my feet. I quit. Boy, they, they've hung me on this cross and dropped it into the earth. I quit. Boy, they're mocking me and ridiculing me. I quit. Boy, they've thrust this spear into my side. I quit. I'm done. I, I've had enough of this. No, he remained faithful. And let that put some perspective to our situations and what we're going through. You know, I, I don't mean to belittle what we're going through. I, I've, I've mentioned that uh, quite a bit troubles and trials and tests that are coming up and things that are happening in our lives. I don't mean to belittle it, but I don't want it to hinder you. I don't mean to make light of it. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when the Lord stopped Saul in his tracks, he said, why persecutest thou me? The persecution is real and it touches Jesus. So he's uh, touched with what's happening. Uh, in your life. And, and he is, uh, it's being done to him. He said, before they hated uh, you, they hated me. So he knows what's happening in your life. And it means a lot to him. The very uh, number of hair in your head is numbered. So I don't mean to belittle it. But what I mean to do is to encourage you to stay the task, to run the race, to toe the line, to stay on track, to endure hardness as a good soldier, to stay faithful, to press toward the mark, to decide in your heart and your mind, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I, I'm going to stay and see this thing through for God. I'm going to stay the task. Hey, we're close to the finish line. At any moment, the trumpet could sound. And I don't want, as the trumpet's about to sound, I'm down here saying I quit. I, I don't want that for my life. I want to do everything I can for God. Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Boy, I want to be found faithful. I want God to see me as faithful where he can say, Well done, thou good and faithful, faithful servant. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10 says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Boy, God can't deny who he is. You may doubt him, but he can't deny himself. You may stumble in your faith, but he is God and he will see his will accomplished. God has entrusted us with the greatest thing known to man, the furtherance of the gospel, the edification of the saints, and I believe we need to stay faithful to that. I'd hate to be right here near the finish line and quit. Number three, as we remain faithful, we can observe the moving of God. 
You know, I mentioned David and the five smooth stones. If you're faithful to pick them up, God will guide you. Uh, if you're faithful to stand instead of bowing, God will be with you in the fire. If you continue to pray, God will be with you in the lion's den. When the church is on the move, God is on the move. God wants to do a work through his church. I don't want to scare you with this, but there are many fiery darts of the wicked. There are many things that Satan's going to do to try to deter you. It's not all uh, pleasant with roses and um, everybody's just nice and smooth and pleasant about it. No, there's, there's going to be some things that are going to come up and there's some stands that we must take. And trust God all the while while doing so. Ephesians 6, 16 says, above all, taking the shield of faith, the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So, OK, we know Satan's coming at us, but right here, the shield of faith, you can quench all of that. You stop it dead in its tracks. If you trust God, take the shield of faith. Boy, God has equipped us with what we need to, to shield us and protect us. You'll never see God move if you fail to be faithful. Hey, Gideon, I want you to send all those men back and just take 300 with you. Well, God, I'm going back with those 300 men. He never would have seen God move. Noah, get in the ark, you and your family. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to do that, God, because all these people out here, he would have died with those people. He never would have seen God move. Not one child of God is touched and God doesn't feel it. I mentioned this already. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Boy, the church is being persecuted and Saul failed to realize who was the head of the church. I said the church was being persecuted and Saul failed to realize who was the head of the church. And his name is Jesus Christ. God took that same man that was persecuting the church persecuting the saints and put him in the ministry. That's the God we serve. Just trust him and he will do far more than you could ever imagine. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse 24 says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Well, we get to looking at the calling and thinking, I can't do this. We get to looking at the, the appointment that God has for us thinking there's no way I can handle this. My God shall supply all your needs according to his goodness and his riches. I, I trust God. I believe God will do it. Be that faithful vessel that is mightily used of God. You may not understand how it's going to come to pass, but you can trust God. Boy, I just know God's going to do it. I watched him take a, a lad's meal and uh, feed 5,000 men with it. Boy, I just trust God to do it. We watched as he said, peace, be still. And the winds and the seas obeyed him. Well, we've seen God do many things, but don't doubt him now. There may be things that are going on in your life, but don't doubt him now. The question isn't about the faithfulness of God. He abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. He abideth faithful. The, the question is this. Are you going to be faithful? We walk by faith, not by sight. By faith, through faith, we believe, we understand, we serve. God does the rest. Uh, just because uh, Thomas saw the hands and the feet and the side of Jesus, he said, I, I, I believe. <laughs> I, I got it. Well, we, we don't get to see all of that. There, there are things in, in the Christian life that, that are going down and taking place and you've just got to trust God and stand on God's word and on God's promises. Well, I haven't seen God, but do you trust God? Well, I, I didn't see him down on the cross, but did you trust? Do you trust God? Well, I didn't see him raise Lazarus from the dead, but do you trust him? We trusted him for salvation. We should trust him for everything else in our hearts and in our lives. Things that are going to come up that we have no control over, but he is in full control of. There's nothing that comes my way that God is unaware of. There's nothing that comes my way that takes God by surprise. There's nothing that comes my way that has God in awe and shock sitting in heaven on the edge of his seat like, did that really just happen? Oh my goodness, no, God is well aware and in full control and he allows things to happen that 
will have us on the edge of our seat. Like we can't believe this is going on right now, but God is in control. Trust him. Trust him. John 20 verse 29, Jesus said to Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet have believed. Boy, there's a blessing for that child of God. It says, you know what? Again, I didn't see him die on the cross for me. I didn't see him rise again. As a matter of fact, I didn't see him ascend in the glory. I didn't see him perform the miracles. I've heard his testimony and I choose to believe him. I choose to trust him. Boy, God can do something in your life. God wants to do something through you. But if you don't have the faith in God, then you won't see the power of God. You've got to just trust him with everything in your life. Say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You know, that's easy to say, but when it feels like you're dying in the middle of that thing you're going through, can you still say that, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That's where we need to be, that deepest valley. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Paul, I, I've got to die to myself. I've got to die. I die daily, Paul said. I, I, I must die. I must decrease. He must increase. Boy, the more I back away and the more I give to God, the more God can do through me. But if I'm sitting here trying to control this thing and manipulate it and make it happen the way I want it to, that may not be the way God wanted it to work out. And you're trying to change what God is doing. Well, I just want to trust God. I want to trust God through this year that God's going to do some great things at our church. And I want to trust him to do it. It's not by my might, not by my strength, not by any of our strength or our might. It's his mercy and his goodness, his grace. And we just need to trust him. And know this, even when we doubt, he's still God. He's still all powerful. He's still in control. Even when you're sitting there saying, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you see what we're going through? Don't you understand? He's still all God. He's still all powerful. He's still on the throne. He hasn't relinquished the throne and he's not about to. Satan does not win. He doesn't. Satan does not win. So just trust God. And in the end, as you continue to trust God and let God work, you'll be amazed. You'll sit back and say, man, look at God. Look at what God has done. Boy, I am so grateful that I trusted him. I hope and pray that uh, something tonight was a blessing to you. Uh, be again praying for us as we prepare to travel and uh, make this meeting that God would have his will and his way and that he would get the glory in it. And uh, we look forward to uh, hearing as Brother Shannon preaches Thursday night uh, via live stream and uh, pray that God uses what uh, he's laid on his heart for his honor and glory. And look forward to seeing you all again Sunday morning in our places, uh, worshiping and praising Almighty God because God is waiting to do some great things through us if we just simply trust him. Let's pray and we will be dismissed. Heavenly Father God, thank you for this time together around your word. And Father, I pray something was said to challenge us. And Father, maybe we're doubting somewhere, but Father, help us to just trust you. Uh, just say in our hearts and our minds, in the middle of the conflict or whatever's taking place, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yet will I trust in him. Father, help us to be yielded to you and submitting to you, your will and your way, your plan for our lives, your plan for our church. And Father, may you be glorified in all that's said and done and seen of us. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and thank you. Amen.